Hi, praise be to God. So I had this dream two years ago. I'll put the exact date on the screen. And so anyway, as you hear this dream, I'm going to be saying things like he didn't believe me. He thought I was crazy and things like that because I did not know in this dream that that was God, the father and Jesus. He appeared to me in both forms, God, the father and Jesus. And I was able to talk to him plainly without freaking out, without getting nervous, because I thought it was just a man, like a regular man. Because in this dream, I felt like I was in my true consciousness. Now, in my true consciousness, I probably would have been freaking out like, wow, this is God. And so he did not reveal that to me until after I had the dream. I was in prayer. Amen. And the Lord came to me in a vision and he told me that was him. And I was like, what? (laughs) He let me know that it was him in both forms. God, the father and God, the son. And I was in shock. So it wasn't that he didn't know things. I was the one who didn't know things. And I want to say also pay attention to the screen because I'm going to be putting different notes on the screen and definitely pay attention to the commentary at the end because I was shocked after the Lord revealed to me that it was him in the form of God, the father and God, the son, he started revealing some other things to me. So some stuff I'm going to put in notes and some stuff I plan to just briefly summarize at the end. So here is the dream as I had it years ago. God bless you all. I had a dream that I went back in time. I went through a a portal into another dimension of time. And I saw this man. He was real dark skinned and he had a son and he was working in a barn doing a lot of work and I came in there and I was talking to him a lot and he noticed that my accent was different even though I spoke English and he spoke English I didn't speak like him we was talking for a while and I ended up having to tell him that I'm not from that dimension I said I'm from you know it was on earth I said but I'm from a different time and he was laughing at me he was real kind he was a black guy and he and and uh, let me say this too Well, I'll get to that. But anyway, he was real kind and he was laughing at me. And I was telling him I'm from 2020 and he was laughing. He was cracking up laughing. He thought I was crazy as ever. But um, he kept talking to me, but he was working the whole time. And this is what I was going to say. Like he worked for some white man. And in the dream, I saw a vision of this white man he worked for. And the man was He was kind of mean to me, but the black guy thought he was nice. He was mean, and the way he talked to him was, to me, it was mean and disrespectful. Like, almost, I felt like it was slavery days. And I was telling him that. I was like, wow, he treating you like a slave. And the guy was, the black guy, he just kept, he had such a nice, pleasant attitude. And he laughed, and he was like, oh, slavery is over. Slavery been over. It was funny because the way he was saying it, like, like, oh, that was so long ago. Oh, girl, what, what's wrong with you? And I'm like, and I said, yeah, OK, well, yeah, it ended. But, you know, I didn't want to go into it too much because he couldn't understand, you know, that in our day and age, they don't talk that disrespectful to to black people the way that his boss was talking to him. And so anyway. The whole time he was talking, he he was in a barn and he was going back and forth between a barn and doing like yard. It was this giant yard and he was, he was like seeing to the ground. Like, how can I say this? He was responsible for cutting. Wow. The more I think about it, it was wheat. Yeah, it was long, tall wheat. But it wasn't just wheat. It was other stuff, too. It was other stuff that he was cutting down. And he was using his hand to do it. I mean, like, not his hand, but I mean tools that he had. And different tools and doing work on, like that, working in the yard, doing all kind of stuff, just going back and forth. And I'm trying to talk to him. I want him to sit and talk to me, but he had work to do. 
and his son was there, but he was real little, and his son was helping out as best he could. And so, in the dream, I was going back and forth. I kept coming back to this dimension and going back to his dimension. Going back and forth like that. And then, uh, I'm probably going to forget a lot of this dream, because I was in this dream for a long time. I'm so tired, too. But anyway... So we was just we was just talking a lot and him showing me his work and telling me about his I had a lot of questions about how things was back then and he was just kind of laughing and talking to me like wondering you know thinking I was a bit strange and he didn't believe I was from 2020 and in a dream it felt like I was dressed like I was from 2020 I mean it was like dressed like I was from back there too so he just really didn't believe me. And in the dream, I was younger than I am now. I would say, probably, I would say I felt like I was a young, like in my early 20s or either a teenager. I'm just talking to him and he was acting like, I mean, it felt like he was, like, how can I say this? Wow. To me, it seemed like he was an old man, like a grandpa, even though he wasn't that old because <laughs> his son was very young. But the reason I'm realizing now that it felt that way is because the people that I know who act like that was like my grandpa, you know, like older people, the way his mannerisms were and the way he talked. It was like the way some really old person that I knew when I was young would talk. And so anyway, he was going on and on and he was telling me about how advanced things was in the 1930s and. He was talking about it like it was like this really advanced time and all this and that. And I I was real politely listening to him. I wasn't going to argue with him about anything. But anyway, at one point I went back into 2020 and I bought a tube back with me to cut the the wheat. It was some kind of, dang, I don't even know what this thing is called. I can't remember. But you swing it, you swing it at wheat and it cuts the wheat. And I said, you know, look at what I bought you. And he started laughing. He was like, oh, I got one of them right here. And he had made it himself. He said, I got one of these right here. And I was like, and it was a, this was a really big barn he was working in. It was hay in there as well. So that tells me it was animals as it was hay in there. It was a huge barn. He said, yeah, I made this myself. And my, his was better than mine. Mine looked weak and pathetic to, compared to the one he had. So he was just cracking up laughing like, what is this? He said, oh, you from the He was like, you know, just laughing. I'm like, oh, you from 2020, huh? <laughs> and he was like, mine better than that. And then uh, he has some kind of decks. And it was it was a Dex that I've seen like this long decks. I've seen it before. And it has a part in it that's like. It looks like glass, but I think it's plastic. And it's hard to explain this Dex. I mean, not the plastic wasn't on the Dex. It was like a different part of the compartment. Oh, it's hard to explain. I'm not going to be able to explain it. Forget it. But I've seen it in like an old uh, museum, I would say. And I said, what is this Dex? And he said, oh, that's why I sit and make twos. But he would talk to me like I was, the way he would ask me like, like I was stupid or something. He'll be like, that's why I sit and make twos, you know, <laughs> like he was like, like, you should know that, you know, because he, he really didn't believe that was from 2020. He just thought I was a bit slow and, and just picking on him or something. But he was real kind to me. He was in it like he was entertaining me or something. It was funny. And his son, <laughs> his son was wearing and even the way he dressed like his son was wearing like blue jean coveralls overalls whatever with like a checkered shirt and he had a little straw hat on and he was so cute and he was he was dressed like you know same thing like coveralls but he didn't wear coveralls or did he wear them every day well, he was wearing different clothes and it was blue jean as well and he had a shirt and he had his straw hat on and he he was always chewing on straw too he was always chewing on his straw even though i knew he was younger he was probably only no more than 40 years old, I would think. But the veins and stuff in his arm and his hand, his arm and hand and stuff made him look older. But it was from doing a lot of hard work. And I was, look, I was staring at that when he was talking to me at one time. I was like, man, you know, 
it, it was almost like you know it all that hard work made him look older but he was very very strong very fit i mean he was working like it was nothing and he, he kept sitting down to work when he was making twos and stuff like that though he would sit down and he he was chewing straw like you know that it was nothing and he got up real early in the morning and he would work until like the sun went down yeah he would work from like early in the morning real early we hours in the morning till the sun went down and then he would go and he was happy he had this guy was really happy with his life and he was thinking he had a good life and I'm sitting there looking at him like, well, you know, this guy's talking to you all crazy. And don't you realize he's talking to you crazy? <laughs> and, and he was saying his boss was nice. And actually, his boss was nice, you know, because he didn't mind me coming in there talking to him or nothing. He didn't give me a hard time. But it was just the way he talked to him, though. He talked to him disrespectful, in my opinion. But I guess that's the way they talk to people back then or something. I don't know. So anyway, so he didn't believe me and I kept going back and forth in time. And finally, I said to him, I'm going to take you through a portal. I'm going to take you back to 2020 with me. He was laughing and giggling. He didn't believe me. And then, but he entertained me. He put on his best suit, him and his son. They, they wore suits. <laughs> and I don't know where his wife was. I didn't even, I don't know if she was in the picture or not. But anyway, he entertained me. And in the dream, I took him to 2020 and I took him to my house and he was in shock. We went through a portal right into my house and then he believed me. He was like, what? And I was showing him things like showing him around, showing him the refrigerator and everything. And, and that's right. Also, God help me, Jesus. How could I forget this part? The whole time I was talking to this man, this man, I knew he was an Israelite. He was an Israelite. He was real dark skinned. He was an Israelite. And I knew he was also an ancestor of mine. And he was a Christian. I can't believe I forgot to say that. Yeah, I knew that the whole time I was talking to him. He was my ancestor. So this is really amazing. This guy was like, so now I got to think about who he was. So anyway, we was related. He was uh, an Israelite. And he was a Christian. So when we came to my house and he saw all the crosses everywhere, he liked that. He really was. He really enjoyed seeing the crosses in in my house. And let me say this too. Back then, things was made better. I know. I was noticing that the wood and everything was thicker. It was not no hollow wood like we have today, but it was heavier though. I mean, it was heavier, but it was good, sturdy furniture. It was really nice. And this dream felt so real. It felt like I was really there. And yeah, when he would do some of the yard work, I would help him. I would try to help him, but he just kept laughing at me because obviously I didn't know what I was doing. And I was wearing a dress. <laughs> so he was just be cracking up. He just had a good time laughing at me. So anyway, we came back to the 2020 and I'm showing him around my house. And he was really shocked at how things was made. But he said the same thing. He, was, he, he literally said that the furniture was more flimsy. <laughs> He was like, <laughs> that's funny because he was just checking everything out. And he was like, wow, this furniture is, is like, I don't think, know if he used the word flimsy, but that's what he was saying, that it was flimsy, like it was cheap made or something. And he, he thought things would be a lot better made, you know, all the way in 2020. And he was he was like, wow, you know, but he he liked the house. He liked it, but it was just really different. I was concerned because I thought he was going to be really in shock. And he was in shock. He was literally in shock, but it wasn't like he went crazy because I was my concern. Like, is he going to go crazy? And so first, all we did was look around the house a long time. I showed him all around the house and he, he enjoyed looking at the house. And my daughter wasn't with me at the time, which is true today. She's over her dad's house. And so we went on looking around the house and then we peeked outside and I let him see outside. And he was just um, looking outside and marveled by outside. And then his son was asking me questions like, what can he play with and stuff? And I was telling him how, you know, this is a Christian home. So we do, you know, a lot of Christian games and things like that. But I said in other homes, they play video games and he didn't know what a vi they didn't know, of course, what a video game was. And so I showed them what a video game was like we looked at. I didn't even want to turn the TV on at first, but. 
you know, back in the 1930s, I think they did have TVs, but it, you know, I just I was I was trying not to freak them out too much. And so I I showed them through the TV what a video game was or my iPad. I, actually, more I think about, it, I think it was my iPad I showed them. And I showed them a kid playing a video game and I said this is very demonic. You don't want to do this and I was telling them how kids are addicted to it. They don't even go outside. Because a little boy, he wanted to play like catch or baseball. That's the feeling I got from him. He wanted to do something outside. And and I was like, you don't want to do something. And it was so funny because they had suits on and they had their bow ties on. And it was all dressy, dressy from like the 1930s. And it was funny. And the, the father, he had a little, like he had a cap on. Like not the straw hat. He had like a, a cap. He was real dressed up and we was walking around and um, just we went outside a little bit and I was showing him outside and everything. And he didn't like the world in 2020. He said that he didn't like it. He was like, I don't I don't like this world that y'all live in. And you know, he didn't like he saw that kids was, you know, like I was telling him about the video games and how a lot of kids are, are stuck to video games and. I was telling him how they a lot of them are very disrespectful to their parents and just telling him about our world and what condition it was in. And I was telling him, you know, how bad it is right now. And it's, it wasn't as bad back then. You know, they had some hard times and with slavery and everything that happened after slavery with the segregation and everything like that. But it was still not as bad as the world is today and it was bad and i was telling him like now we don't have slavery and stuff but it's still a lot of racism that's out there but it's not like in our your face is bad as it used to be and i'm not going to get into that right now i've already done a video <laughs> i already did a video on racism so i'm not going to talk about that right now and some of the things i was telling him and then i was telling him we pretty much in the end of the world right now like it's bad it's gonna we going into the end of the world, like the time of the Antichrist. And he was like, yeah, I wouldn't want to live in this time. And he felt sorry for me, actually. He was feeling sorry for me. But we still had a good time in the house, you know. And um, we did walk. We took a walk outside and came back in the house and just had a good time. And they wanted to eat. And it was kind of funny. <laughs> They wanted to eat, and I started getting real nervous because I was like, "Oh my goodness!" First of all, I'm I'm not the best cook. Now, <laughs> now I can cook. Don't get me wrong, but that's not what I mean. I, first of all, I only eat fruit and vegetables and eggs. That's it. That's all I eat. So I didn't even hardly have any food. And I know what they like to eat because I grew up like that. I grew up making homemade biscuits, homemade pancakes, homemade you know fried chicken and all the homemade stuff. We made everything from scratch. We didn't have box food when I grew up. You didn't have no box macaroni and cheese and no, all this box food they got today. We made everything from scratch, you know, and it was good, good food. And they expected to have a good meal like that. They thought I was going to supply them with a very good meal like that. And I was in shock when they when was hungry because I was like, <laughs> I was like, I know I ain't got no good food for them. It was funny. So in a dream, I ordered a pizza. <laughs> I was like, well, this is how we eat in, <laughs> in 2020. And he didn't say anything. Now, he was being polite because he looked at the kitchen. I saw him look. He looked at the kitchen and he looked at all the cabinets and stuff like. So he just say anything, but he was like, why, why you got this big refrigerator and all this? And you telling me all you do is order a pizza. And so, but he didn't say nothing. And they said, and they ate the pizza and they really ate it. But he, he liked his food better. You know, he was polite about it. He didn't say that. He didn't say nothing. You know, I was saying, you know, they, cause that's how I was raised too. You sat down and you ate and you did not complain. But I could tell that he liked his food better. And his son did the same th thing. They have very good manners. And they ate their food with their suit and tie on at the dining room table. And then after they finished eating and everything, I took them back into their world. And we made, we said our goodbyes and stuff. And it was, it was a really pleasant dream. So God is showing me that I not only can go through portals 
of different locations. Thank you, Father. I can go through dimensions of time. I was wondering about that. Wow. Thank you, Lord. I went through dimensions of time even. Oh, my God. Thank you, Lord. That is amazing. It was good. Thank you, Father. That was a dream. Praise be to God. Praise be to God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for that dream. So I need to give this quick commentary to explain a few things and add things that I left out of the recording. As I said in the beginning, I did not know this was God the Father. It was so funny. So I kept thinking he didn't know things. He didn't understand things. But clearly he did. Yeah, it was so pleasant. I have laughed and laughed about this dream for years. And I give God the glory for making me laugh like that. He has a wonderful personality and he knows how to make me laugh. Some people don't laugh that much or they laugh at different things, but these kind of things make me laugh. So it was very pleasant for me. So I want to add this as well. When I was sitting with the Lord in the barn and I know it was God, the father, the Lord confirmed that to me. At one point, he kept turning his face side to side really showing me his face. He kept showing, like I saw his face clear as day. He was a very handsome, dark skinned African American man. Now I know people are scratching their head going, I thought no one can see God, the father and live and things like that. I have seen God, the father many times in many different forms. So when the Bible says that, I believe it's talking about us not seeing him in his true form. So I saw him in this form. I've seen him in other forms. I've talked about that in other videos, like totally different races, all kind of stuff, even different genders. Even he came to me in the form of a female. So I don't think it's God's true form, but I think it was very loving for him to keep turning his face like that, saying, look at me, look at me. And only the pure in heart can see God. And I had another dream or vision. I think it was a dream. It was years ago. And the Lord told me that I had a pure heart. And I thank God for that. And I'm not saying that to brag, not anything like that. I'm saying that to clarify. So that happened. And then also I want to point out the Lord's character. Now, when you think of the character of the Lord, the best way I can explain it to you guys because you're only hearing this dream, seeing the graphics on the screen. But to really get an idea of his character, to me, he closely resembled the character of George Washington Carver. Of all the people that I know of in the world, I would say that his character was very similar to him. I'll see if I can find a video about his life and you can see that. However, the Lord is very funny. He cracks a lot of jokes. And I don't know if George Washington Carver cracked that many jokes because that's what I like. You know, I like to joke around with good jokes, not jesting, not nasty jokes, not hurtful jokes, but the kind of jokes that the Lord does is awesome. And his demeanor was very pleasant. And he also showed me that he was a very hard worker. So it was this dream also that instilled in me to work very, very hard to not complain. Amen. And I have a lot on my plate, a lot. I have so much to do. Praise be to God every day. And I thank God. And I'm human and I just go through life and say, hey, you know, no sense in complaining. So I try not to complain. This is something that the Lord taught me and maybe it can bless someone. The Lord taught me that just because I'm a female doesn't mean I have to nag. Amen. And just because I'm older, because I'm going on 50, doesn't mean I have to be frustrated about everything. And just because I'm human doesn't mean that I have to be negative. I can do all things through Christ. And that is what God taught me. So I try to also have that pleasant demeanor that I saw the Lord with. It was awesome. He's a great example. And he also showed me in this dream that he is very wise. Amen. And his farm was absolutely gorgeous. It really looked like something straight out of heaven. It was beautiful, perfect. I cannot even explain it to you all. Also, as I put on the screen, I believe that the Caucasian man represented mankind and how mankind deals with the Lord. And throughout the video, I kept saying 1930s. But if you saw the notes on the screen, I meant 1920s. I didn't know that until recently the Lord let me know that it was a 1920s. I knew it was like the 20s or 30s. So in the video, I was just saying 1930s, but it was the 20s. And also it was this dream that encouraged me to start making gourmet vegetarian dishes. 
before I used to eat veggie tacos a lot. Like I would eat that almost every night. I would eat vegetables, eggs, and you know, we eat healthy and stuff like that. But I wasn't making dishes like I do now. Like now I make these really gourmet vegetarian dishes, praise be to God. And I thank God for encouraging me to do that. And then I said that I didn't think the Lord would like that type of food, but I put a note on the screen already explaining that that's not the case. I'm not going to go over that right now because it was lengthy. And one of the things that I had a question about before I had this dream, I was praying to the Lord and asking him, am I going to be able to go through dimensions of time? Because he had been teaching me about dimensions of time. And what am I talking about? I'm talking about the abilities that we're going to have after the shift. I'm not going to go into that too much right now. I've talked about it in other videos, but it was this dream that the Lord answered me on that. And he was showing me, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. He showed me personally that, yes, I will be able to go through dimensions of time. And it was after this dream that the Lord also confirmed that in other dreams as well. And I want to lastly say that this was one of the most pleasant dreams I've ever had. I had so much fun. <laughs> I had so much fun with this dream. And then when I found out it was God, it was like, wow, it was even more fun. I had so much fun making this video. So I just had a lot of laughs. I give God all the glory. And I pray that you all enjoyed it as well. God bless you all. Bye.